Greetings, students. My name is Ken Elliott. I'm a psychologist and a professor of psychology here at the University of Maine uh, in Augusta, Maine, which is the state in the upper northeastern corner of the United States. I'm making this video on April 20th uh, before our meeting on the 23rd in the hopes that you'll have a chance to view it and think about the issues uh, that we're going to be discussing later in this coming week. So I'm going to present briefly, hopefully uh, taking about 25 minutes. Uh, rather than doing a traditional lecture, what I would like to do is make use of both PowerPoint slides and a second brief video in order to introduce the subject of adolescence and more particularly identity formation in adolescence, drawing on the work of Eric Erickson, uh, James Marsha, Joan Erickson, and uh, attachment theory by John Bowlby, Alice Ainsworth, and others. So those are some of the academic uh, references. Um, and the video that accompanies this one you'll see on my PowerPoint slides. It's an actual presentation by a teenager herself that illustrates very well the points that I want us to discuss later this week when we have our meeting. So let me switch now to PowerPoint slides and hopefully you will listen to my slides and my presentation and then view the case study that uh, I want us to share and talk about later this week. All right, now I have shifted into PowerPoint mode and I'll put the presentation here on the slides uh, in front of us. So this is a case-based presentation uh, revolving around the conceptual ideas of identity formation and attachment theory as they are evident in adolescence. I have to tell you that I constructed this case based on my clinical practice of uh, a number of years ago before I became a full-time professor uh, working here in the university. So I, I hope uh, you will find this a useful presentation. What I would like to do is, first of all, uh, comment briefly on the, the important idea of cultural perspectives. I am um, mindful of the fact that I will be presenting this to you from my own perspective, that of an American psychologist here in Maine. Uh, and I want to learn from you uh, how thinking in terms of the uh, Czech perspective might add to the richness of our learning about adolescence and adolescent identity formation. So we'll briefly talk about the two cultural perspectives. Also, as I mentioned earlier, I am both a clinical psychologist and an academic researcher here at the university. I would like to present a small number of basic theoretical and conceptual issues that later on will be included in the questions that I'll ask us to think about when we meet on the 23rd. And as I said, I would like you to take a moment and think about this case study and view a similar case study uh, video that is in YouTube, which I'll be pointing you to shortly. So first of all, on the matter of uh, the American and the uh, Czech perspectives, um, adolescence is a very culturally uh, informed developmental stage. Uh, and we are all aware of the fact that in some cultures there isn't even a stage of adolescence, but rather the person transitions directly from childhood to young adulthood. Uh, in uh, 
the American culture, adolescence, is uh, a stage defined largely by the work of Eric Erickson and Joan Erickson and James Marsha and others. Uh, and the primary psychosocial challenge or crisis of adolescence is, of course, identity formation. The institutions that uh, provide the setting for this transitional work on the part of the young person are both the family uh, and the uh, transition from elementary and central uh, schools, uh, what we call middle schools, to high schools. So it's primarily in this developmental time that I want to place this case study which I'm going to share with you. So from uh, my perspective, which is what we have to start with in our conversation, uh, the case that I want to share with you is of a young girl who is transitioning from pre-adolescence into uh, her early adolescence stages. And she is certainly struggling with identity formation, uh, which is a complex uh, process that, at least from uh, the American uh, framework, generally uh, goes through three stages of uh, early adolescence, middle adolescence, and then late adolescence as one transitions into young adulthood. Um, the identity problems are multifaceted, uh, having to do with not only one's public image, one's social image, but also one's uh, self-concept and personal identity. And the case that I'm going to share with you is one, uh, the individual we will call Lena. She's a young uh, girl who had profound identity problems that eventually became manifested in her eating behaviors. So uh, she's a, a a very interesting person who struggled greatly uh, around the issues of not only socialization but the meaning of eating and uh, food and its relationship to her own image as she entered uh, young adole early adolescence. With respect to attachment theory, uh, Lena was a particularly interesting person because she was uh, a young woman with unusual experience with immigration. She, in fact, began her life in St. Petersburg, Russia, uh, where she and her family were successfully uh, uh, living in that environment until the mother and father and older brother made the decision that they needed to leave Russia for political reasons and they migrated as immigrants first to Italy for a period of two years when Lena was about 10 years old, 10 to 12. And then they migrated from there to Canada where I met them uh, when Lena was about 13 years old. And um, I had the privilege of working with her and her family um, for a period of almost three years as she moved into adolescence. So I, I mention these cultural migrations simply because they uh, challenged uh, and put an emphasis upon her attachment uh, within her family and within her culture and community. Her family was a very close-knit one. Um, her mother was an elementary school teacher. Her father was a construction worker. Her brother was two years older than she, so when she was 13, he was 15, um, also experiencing identity challenges as he assumed his um, uh, place in the Canadian community uh, in the city of Toronto, Canada. So the whole family was challenged uh, in terms of their attachment to their their local community and in terms of each of their identities, but certainly uh, this was the greatest challenge for uh, these two young uh, 
children moving into adolescence. I would also like to, um, for the purposes of our meeting later this week, ask what is a successful resolution of adolescence? And can a person like Lena, who is challenged on many levels uh, in her, her efforts to form a successful identity, um, can we learn something about the nature of successful adolescence itself? And then finally, adolescence, of course, is a period of changing relationships for the teenager, both with their family and their peers. And we will, we will consider uh, Erickson's theory of, of uh, psychosocial development um, in the context of Lena's struggle with identity, and particularly with eating behaviors related to identity. So let me give you just a little bit more about uh, Lena herself. Uh, I've given you something about the family and the structure of the family and their recent history of migration, recent being over a five-year period. Um, the, as a psychologist working at the University of Toronto, this family came to my attention when they were referred uh, by the family physician for the fact that she was exhibiting some degree of school refusal where she had formerly been a, a very high achieving student getting A's in her studies and being socially popular. She began to become quite withdrawn and indeed uh, began uh, avoiding school and uh, telling her parents that she would not go to school. At the same time, both in the school setting and this was when she was about 13 years of age. In the school setting, she became very, very particular about what she was eating, and even more so at home. And at home, she would want to eat in her room, often uh, would not want to eat with her family, and often what she ate was peculiar insofar as she was restricting her, her diet and intake, avoiding breakfast, uh, eating very little at dinner, and at lunch eating one, uh, wanting to eat only uh, water and uh, lemons, as in sliced lemons in the water. So her family uh, was concerned. They took her to the family physician, and uh, the family physician was greatly concerned because her weight had dropped uh, well below 100 pounds. And I'm sorry, I can't translate that into kilos for you, but perhaps in our discussion we can do that. But she was essentially five nine, between five eight and five five foot eight and five foot nine inches, and yet she weighed somewhere between seventy and eighty five pounds when I saw her. So there was a great concern for her physical well being as well as her emotional and social well being. Um, I would ask you at this point to get a visual image of a teenager having these kinds of behavior problems and identity conflicts. I would ask you to, uh, if you are able to, go to youtube.com and use this link as a way of uh, viewing a video. It's a four minute video made by a very similar teenager whose name is Molly. And this is purely from the teenager's point of view. And so I think you'll get a good visual representation of a um, early teen having a very similar set of problems. Um, and you'll see it from the teen's own point of view. So at, stop this video at this point now and go and listen to Molly. And remember that we're, we're talking about a very similar uh, teenager uh, when we meet on uh, Wednesday for our discussion. So here are the notes that I made as the clinical psychologist. Uh, Lena herself didn't think she had any problems. She, w she thought that her parents were overreacting and overly concerned. And she was angry that her physician wanted to send her to me and to our treatment team. Nevertheless, as I noted earlier, she was withdrawn and isolated, uh, staying mostly in her home. Uh, she was very intelligent, uh, had done well uh, historically, academically. 
Now, she and her older brother began fighting where they had previously been close friends. She withdrew from any kinds of peer relations in Toronto and had no history of romantic or intimate relationships with boys at all. She had no interest in hobbies or a social life. She withdrew from any kind of exercise or athletics. Um, even though she was ambitious, saying that she wanted to become a physician and attend medical school at some point in her future. And as I mentioned, she was about 5 foot 8 inches uh, and weighed under 90 pounds. Her memory of her own history was understandably selective. Uh, the difficulties that the family had in St. Petersburg uh, were not well communicated by either her parents or uh, by Lena herself. Her command of the English language was quite good. However, her, the uh, English speaking abilities of her parents was not good. Her brother spoke English uh, fluently, uh, as well as Russian, of course. And um, when asked about her future, her personal future, Lena would, was quite non-committal, uh, saying that she had no vision of uh, starting a family or engaging in a life outside of school or her work aspirations. Just to let you know what happened, uh, I saw her for three years, uh, and I did uh, work with a consulting psychiatrist uh, who prescribed antidepressant medications which had minimal effect as far as uh, improving her mood, her sense of unhappiness. Uh, I saw her with her family um, and we worked in a, a family systems approach uh, as well as uh, working on contract with her to maintain her weight. Unfortunately, her weight continued to drop until her consulting uh, physician was concerned enough that she had to be hospitalized twice only to reestablish a minimal uh, weight so that she wasn't at risk for cardiac arrest or other kinds of severe uh, medical emergencies. She stayed in hospital for a grand total of probably about five months uh, did return to her family home and her school. She eventually did graduate from high school after she discontinued therapy and upon last report uh, changed her aspirations and attended a, a community college in the hopes of becoming a nutritionist, which means an advisor for eating patterns uh, for uh, children and young adults. So. Here are the conceptual issues that I want us to think about when we meet on Wednesday. Uh, Eric Erickson indicated that adolescence was a period of, of struggling with identity and along with James Marsha pointed out that certainly not all adolescents are successful in forming a firm identity, uh, one that is emotionally as well as conceptually well grounded across the adolescent's experience. Uh, and I want us to think about uh, um, Lena in terms of the degree to which she achieved this throughout her uh, middle adolescence in particular. We'll talk about on Wednesday the contextual features and again the attachment history that really makes Lena quite unusual as an adolescent. Uh, having multicultural transitions, having shifting peer groups, um, as well, and language systems that she used. She spoke uh, three languages fluently, Italian, Russian, and English. Um, and we'll also look at Lena in terms of her personal psychological resources. I personally was impressed by her ability to benefit from therapy both because of her intellectual abilities, but also over time uh, where she gradually began to gain a greater acceptance of the seriousness of her uh, psychiatric uh, distortion of her uh, bodily image and her, uh, her atypical fear of normal body weight. 
Um, so I believe she had good resources and achieved uh, a generally a positive outcome through a very difficult adolescence, uh, drawing upon her both her family and her individual psychological resources. Finally, I think her educational setting was and her clinical setting, needless to say, in which I was involved. But her educational setting in particular was very important as a transitional feature, allowing her some con continuity and importantly some success where her level of confidence was already high. So I think it was through her school experience that she was able to achieve a sense of permanence and continuity across uh, very changing circumstances throughout her preteen and teenage years. So I'm hopeful that we'll come back and uh, visit, uh, ask ourselves about the role of each of these important features of her identity development uh, through these adolescent years. So uh, by way of giving us just four focal questions, uh, I would like you to consider and us to discuss when we meet. Uh, number one, uh, do you think that Lena had a, a severe problem, perhaps even a diagnosable problem, uh, or was it just a stage of adolescent development in a very unusual adolescent history? Um, Lena herself uh, argued that she never had a problem and that this was simply a matter of normal adolescent development. Secondly, if indeed uh, you agree, as we believe, that she had a serious and life-threatening problem, uh, then the question is what needs to be done. Should she have been brought into hospital? Uh, should she have been um, removed from her school or remained in the school? We'll look at the treatment decisions that were made, the family decisions that were made. We'll note it, the fact that at one point she was uh, put into the hospital against her will uh, on the recommendation of both her physicians and her family members uh, who were concerned about her physical safety. I will be happy to share with you some of the crisis that she went through, both while in hospital and while in the community, as well as the success that she had in emerging out of those crises. Finally, uh, the importance of her strengths, uh, her environmental assets, are ones that I will underline because I believe uh, these are what accounted largely for her having a successful resolution, although I will make a case for her being at continued risk uh, based upon what I know about the, the diagnosis and prognosis of the disorder that we call anorexia nervosa. And finally, the issue of maturational factors. Is time itself a therapeutic ingredient? And is doing nothing at all to help an adolescent sometimes the, the critical ingredient to see them through a difficult period of identity transition and formation? So these will be the four questions that we'll organize our discussion around um, in the uh, discussion that I'm looking forward to later this week. Finally, I'm going to ask you about uh, cultural uh, elements. Uh, in your view, if, if this were a young girl in uh, Liberitz <clears throat> or in another city in Czech Republic, uh, how would this have been different? Or how would it have been the same? So I think we have much to talk about when we get together. I hope the video that you uh, took the time to see <clears throat> of Molly was helpful. And I look forward to meeting with both you and with the main students who will be able to join us uh, for what I think will be a lively discussion uh, later this week. So thank you for your attention. Um, here's a selected bibliography, and needless to say, I will be happy to share with you my uh, contact information in terms of email and those kinds of things when we meet later this week. So have a good week, and I will look forward to uh, seeing you uh, soon.